You are listening to the Boss Experience Podcast, a podcast with conversations about business growth, self-development, and maintaining a mindset to achieve business success. My name is Michelle Davis, and I am a business strategist and coach, and I'm your host. Let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the Boss Experience Podcast. My name is Michelle Davis, and I'm your host. And in this episode, I am going to discuss the one thing that a lot of entrepreneurs don't want to share with you, and that is all the stupid mistakes they made when they first started out. And so I want to do this in two ways. One is I want to share with you some of the common mistakes that new entrepreneurs make. But I also want to tell you some of the stupid things I did when I first started out and just some of the things that I did just simply didn't take into consideration as a new entrepreneur. And, you know, as you learn and you grow, of course, you know, you get better at things, you get more knowledgeable, more savvy. But starting out, I was a, I was a bit of a mess. <laughs> and it's funny because if you've been following me for a while, you know that prior to Uh, starting my own business or being, you know, stepping into entrepreneurship, I was in nonprofit services. I worked in nonprofit services for 20 plus years. And for 16 of those years, I was a nonprofit manager doing everything from running a domestic violence shelter and operating programs that help formerly incarcerated individuals, chronically ill individuals, And so at times I've supervised as many as 35 people, some indirectly, of course. And here I was with all all of this experience and all of this knowledge and all of the education, and I still made stupid mistakes. So in this episode, I want to just talk about uh, what those mistakes are, were, and just be transparent and just show you that just because you're saying, you know, you want to be in business doesn't mean that your path to success is going to be smooth. You have to go through failure. You have to go through obstacles to eventually get where you want to be. I'm sharing these mistakes with you. I'm sharing these stupid things with you that a lot of new entrepreneurs do to inspire you to keep going if you've made some of these mistakes. So So far, um, before we jump into the heart of the episode, I just want to share what I've covered so far in season two. In season two, I talked about just a simple exercise, how to come up with a business idea. Then I talked about for-profit versus non-profit business models. Then I talked about how to find your target audience and connect with them online. And then I talked about how to create a profitable coaching program and the different elements that go into creating a profitable coaching program. Then I also uh, gave you five different offers you could implement in your service-based business immediately. And some of the things to look out for, how to tell if an offer is something you're ready for right now in your business. And then I had a special guest who shared how to market your high ticket offer. And so if you haven't caught those episodes, I encourage you to go back and do so once you're done with this episode, of course, and, you know, just get reconnected and get tuned into those other topics. So with that being said, let's talk some of the stupidest things that new entrepreneurs do, me included. So when I first started out in entrepreneurship, and I first had the idea that I want, wanted to start my own business. I had no idea what that meant. I didn't have any entrepreneurs in my family. I didn't know the different business models. I was just clueless. And there was really no one for me to ask in terms of, you know, really getting to the bottom of like how, you know, to really come up with a business idea. And so I think I, like a lot of other entrepreneurs out there, people that are just starting out, you don't really have a mentor, you know, to really go to, to kind of think of, you know, what is it that you should be doing? And that is why I made that a critical piece of my group coaching program, CEO Blueprint Academy, because you really need to have some mentorship and you really need to have an understanding of the different types of models. So you choose the right one that's for you. Hope that makes sense. But 
the first mistake I want to mention or the first stupid thing that I want to mention is to just follow the right people, follow the right people in the industry. What tends to happen is that people follow and they believe, um, and when it comes down to business, they believe people based on their level of popularity, who, who they see the most. And I was the same way. And I must tell you, the people I've learned the most from, you, you don't really see them every day online. I, w- I will say that. I'm not saying that that's the case for a lot of your entrepreneurs that are on line every day doing lives. I'm not saying that they don't have anything to contribute, but most of the coaches I've gone on to work with aren't people that are all over online every day. And I've gotten a tremendous amount of value from those relationships. But you really have to be careful about who you follow. And, you know, when you go and you follow people based on popularity, you're not looking at what is it that you need to learn? And that's where it all starts, because when you lead with, you know, who am I going to follow? You first need to know what information are you seeking that this person can provide you? Because if you go and you're just looking online and you're just looking for someone to follow and you're trying to grasp and find this perfect business idea based on what someone recommends, you need to take a step back and you need to say, okay, what is it that I'm, am I wanting to learn more about marketing? Am I wanting to learn more about branding? Like what, else, what do I need to know? And you follow people based on what you want to know more about or who you want to stay connected to. And, you know, that should not be the only part of your, your social media strategy or LinkedIn strategy or Pinterest strategy or whatever platform you're on. But it's an important part to know what is it that you want to get out of following people. And if you lead off with, you know, I'm going to buy what they're, whatever it is they're selling. That's probably not the best model for you, right? So, um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to establish what is it that you need to know? What is your goal for following someone? Silly thing I did, a couple of silly things I did when I first started out. I was trying to learn more about uh, affiliate marketing. And I was just trying to find my place. Like I had no idea like what business idea I wanted to pursue. I wanted to make money and I want, I thought I could make it fast. And you know, as a single mom, I, I wanted to support myself. I fed into that whole dream life of entrepreneurship that I was going to be able to work full time from home. And this was long before COVID. And I ended up following a couple of people and investing in their programs. And the thing is, when you follow people, you need to know their backstory. And I think backstory is so important because some people seem like they just kind of fell out of the, the clear blue sky and now they're launching courses, they have coaching programs. And, and so I invested in someone who had this course and they had like this training program and it was a gentleman. I won't, of course, mention his name on this, on this episode, but I invested in them. They had a, a Facebook group of about, I, I would say maybe 20,000, 25,000 members. And you know, when I started working and, and being a part of this training group, it was, I was over the moon at first, but then I kind of took a step back and like, wait a minute, wait a minute, this, something's not right about this because I was investing money. And every time I would invest money, um, they, it, it was almost like what I invested in either wasn't available or it was, wasn't completed. It was like, you know, they were developing the course, but, and they were promising, let's say 20 modules. And all of a sudden they only have three modules available. Then they would be selling something else. And, you know, to this group of 25,000 people, and eventually you're buying, you're buying, you're buying, and you never really got anything that you bought fulfilled. And so I quickly got out of that. But then as I was getting out, I realized there was some rumor that this person had a history. And sure enough, when I Googled them, they had spent time in prison for insurance fraud. They were writing false policies. So I'm like, okay, first lesson is check people out before you invest in their courses. (laughs) Make sure they haven't been to prison (laughs) and make sure that they're reputable because to me, that goes to credibility. Then there was a second person that I invested in and You know, they were very popular as well. They had a whole legion of followers on YouTube and and Facebook and Instagram. And I felt like, you know, surely with all of these followers, they must be reputable, right? Wrong. (laughs) 
the same thing as the first person I was, you know, investing to learn more about marketing, more about business. And I never got what I paid for. I never got the full potential of what I, you know, just everything that I paid for. So if you're offering me, you know, to pay X amount of dollars to, you know, have this marketing platform where you're constantly, you know, posting courses and constantly giving me tutorial videos and you only come up with five videos, my expectation was a little bit higher than that. And so I never felt like I got what I invested into it. So long story short, know who you're investing in, know who you're following. You can very easily easily be misled on these internet streets. So just know who you're dealing with, which leads me to branding. Starting a business is easy. Making money from your business is the hard part. The only way to launch a profitable business is to have a plan, direction, and one source of information that gives you everything you need to get started. So what if I told you that a blueprint exists that can take you from finding a business idea you love to launching a profitable online business without an email list, a big social media following, or wasting your time scouring the internet trying to put the pieces together. Get the only source you need to launch your profitable business today. Just visit bossbusinessplanner.com to get yours today. Now back to the episode. Now, with my whole quest, and and if you've followed other episodes, you know, when I first started off in business, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I started off in MLM and then I got into affiliate marketing. I was just all over the place. And I didn't take the time to actually ask myself, what do I want to be known for? What do I stand for? You need to have an expertise, you know, to be able to help people, to be able to solve their problems. And if you're all, if I'm, you know, I was all over the place, you know, when I first started in business. And if you're all over the place, it's kind of hard for you to come up to to kind of discover what your expertise is. And it's even harder for you to develop that process that you need to actually help people. Because, you know, when we think of branding, people tend to think of branding as, you know, cute colors and um, the aesthetics of branding. But branding actually goes a little bit deeper, a lot deeper. Branding is what are you known for? When people see you, what do they expect to see? Branding is, you know, what, what are your values? What do you believe in? It goes beyond just your voice and what you're what video you post it? What is it? What are your values as an entrepreneur? What are you promoting? What goes against you, your brand? What fits into your brand? What is your voice online? And, you know, a lot of people don't take the time to develop that out, who they are, what they want to be known for, where their knowledge base is, what can they offer the world or even their audience or their community beyond what they sell? And you really need to have a, you know, a sense of who you are in your space before people can regard you as an expert. So first mistake is know who to follow, you know, don't follow the wrong people. Second thing is have a brand. Okay. The third mistake I want to highlight is, you know, when I started out, I mentioned, you know, I had no idea what I wanted to do and I tended to follow what I saw online. And I never once thought to ask myself, Michelle, what are your strengths? Here I was having come from a long career, you know, 20 plus years, 16 years in management. What skills do I already have that I can monetize instead of, you know, going online, selling other people's products through multi-level marketing, helping to promote other companies, you know, through affiliate marketing, other companies and products. And I'm not saying affiliate marketing is wrong, but the way I was doing it is wrong. That was my total existence was to promote other products. And that works for some people, but that's not what I wanted. Third mistake I want to mention or the third stupid thing that people do is they don't ask themselves what they want. Because you have, when you look online, you have a group of people that believe that you need to look at the trends, you need to look at what's selling, and that is what you jump on board with. And then once you find success, in whatever that trendy thing was, then you can do what you're passionate about. And that is the school of thought out there. So in other words, what that message says is the only way you can be successful in business is if you find the the latest trend. 
And if you've watched any of my other videos, listened to any of my other podcast episodes, you already know how I feel about trends. You know, when you look at trends and you try and you try and build a business around trends, trends come and go and you can very easily be out of business. Business models come and go. The same thing or the same way that some of these business models operate, they've changed over the years. If, if you're already knowledgeable about industry, you can essentially walk in and just kind of think, okay, so I already know about this industry. What do I need to know to further enhance my knowledge? But when you disregard your experience, when you disregard what you already know, you're walking into the industry and you're starting at zero because you have no credibility in the industry. You don't know anything about what you're selling. You're uh, relying on someone else to educate you from everything from A to Z. And that may be fine for some people. And the other thing is you, you're doing it all off of the promise that you're going to be as successful doing it as someone else. And you have no idea what went into the back end of what someone of someone's success. You don't know. You just see the front end and you think, oh, they're making money at this. You don't know if, if you have the same resources that they had on the back end. You don't know if you have the same setup on the back end. You don't know, and you can't predict your success based on someone else's. So ask yourself what it is you want. Think about what you want to be known for in the industry and, and capitalize your own expertise. After all, you, your employer hired you based on your experience. So why is your experience not good enough when it's time to monetize your expertise for yourself? So you have to think about that. Okay, so the so another mistake, and this is probably mistake number four. We had uh, mistake number one, which was following the wrong people and and buying into the wrong programs. Number two was you know not branding yourself and understanding you are a brand. And number three was asking yourself what it is that you want and what you and you know what you want to be known for. And no, so number four is don't do too much. And so what exactly does that mean? So a lot of entrepreneurs tend to start out, the new ones start out doing, you know, kind of like the side hustle thing. And so I, I observe people who have three, four different side hustles, some even more, and they're just hustling. They're doing this, they're doing that. And the first thing I think about is, you're doing too much and you're working full time, you're not making any money. I mean, you're just doing a bunch of stuff, looking busy, and you're not making any money. That's the first thing I think about because, you know, it just looks like you're kind of dabbling and dipping into different industries and you haven't sat down to really just kind of plan out an identity for yourself. And that goes back to the branding piece. You know, it starts with an identity. Who are you? What are you known for? And if you're doing, you know, three, four different things, it's hard to, you know, really be known for anything. And you may do really well selling to friends and family, you know, however well that could be. It depends on, you know, for some people making an extra $50 is okay for them. For me as a single mother, that was never the case. I wanted more than that. I wanted an established business. So if you're okay doing, um, you know, a whole bunch of, you know, work and spending a whole bunch of time running around doing different side hustles for $50 a week. And you're okay with that. And you're happy with that. That's fine. That just wasn't my goal. So know what your goal is and, you know, take the time to number one, choose the right thing to do the right side hustle, the right business model to pursue, and then go all in on it. You know, because if you're doing three, four different things, you're not going all in on all those things. It's not humanly possible because you're the one that's hustling for through all those different models to, to earn your next dollar. You're not really making money. You're just doing a bunch of hustles. I always tell my clients, let's, you know, we start at the beginning and we start at, you know, what is it that you want to be known for? And we talk about eliminating things that they may be doing. If they're doing three, four different things, let's part this down to one based on, you know, what knowledge, skills, and expertise you have, because you cannot, you cannot build a business off three, four, or five different side hustles. It's just not going to work. So go all in, figure out what it is that you're skill, already skilled at, 
and figure out how you can, you know, what knowledge you need to acquire to make yourself better at it. And that's when it go, comes down to investing in yourself. So um, invest in yourself where you, you know, where you lack knowledge so that you can be the best at whatever it is you're trying to be. And then the, the next mistake I want to just kind of focus on is operate your business like a business. Okay. And you can't do that if you're doing a bunch of side hustles. So operate your business like a business. And what that means is know what you're bringing in. Track your revenue. Did you know that more than half of Americans have listened to a podcast episode at least once? So if you have a product or service that needs to reach an online audience, advertising on a podcast like The Boss Experience is a great way to get in front of your ideal customer. When you secure an advertising slot on an episode, The Boss Experience podcast listeners get to hear about your business every time someone tunes into that episode. So what are you waiting for? Visit bit.ly forward slash podcast episode sponsor to get started. Now back to the episode. Track your expenses. Get rid of things that aren't working in your business and and do more of what is working. And to do that, you got to know your numbers, you know, have some key performance indicators know where your revenue is coming from so that you cut those things off that aren't yielding any results and you do more of what is. So if you're doing paid ads, look at those numbers, establish what what you're going to, what are going to be your key performance indicators. If you're doing organic marketing, how many hours are you doing spending on organic marketing and should you be investing with someone to do paid ads? So you have to know and you have to sit down and you have to figure out what is going to work in your business. Strangely enough, you have a lot of people who want a business, but they don't want to put in the time and they don't want to put in the hours to really do what it it takes to be in business. And I always tell those people is, you know, business isn't for you. If you don't want to take the time to plan out your business, know your numbers and to really structure your business like a business. Take everything you've been learning in your nine to five. Look at the policies, look at the practices, look at the trainings that you've been offered. Take advantage of trainings that you've been given to help you get more organized in your nine to five and see how you can apply those things to your business. You know, what are their mission statements? You know, how can you create your own mission statement for your business? What are the values? You know, take the time to incorporate those things into your existing business or the business you want to create. And look at how they're tracking things and think about the things that you want to track in your business. You know, sometimes you already have the answers within you. You just have to get an implementation mode and implement what you already know. Because what we tend to do is, you know, and I did the same thing too. As soon as I realized I didn't know something, I'm like on Google searching and and doing all this stuff and looking at other people. But it all starts, sometimes I had the answers right already within me. I was doing it every day in my nine to five in terms of what, you know, performance indicators I could track in my business. So the same thing you do in your every day, all day in your business, because everything is about numbers in the organizations that you work for. And it should be the same way in your business. Plan out your business. Take the time to write out a business plan. Know where you're at and where you're where you're going and what you need to do in between to get there. Establish, you know, systems. So that you have a system, especially, you know, if you're working nine to five, you know, systems are going to save your life and save your business and help you grow. But have those systems in place so that things are automated and working and, it, you know, simplify your life in terms of how, how much effort and time it takes to, to manage your business. So interestingly enough, one thing I want to say about is tools. Don't buy unnecessary tools and, and make sure you're investing in tools that are actually going to help you. I remember when I first started out, a lot of people were, especially with affiliate marketing, you know, you, you may buy a course and they recommend a tool that they recommend a higher plan that you absolutely need. And sometimes you don't need all that stuff. And I do, you know, I recommend things too in my business, but I, one thing I don't do because I didn't like it done to me is I, I don't recommend things or tell you you have to do something a certain way. I'm going to share all the different ways you can do something so that you can choose what's best for you and what's best for your life and time, time, you know, constraints. So 
you definitely want to know how much you're spending on these tools too. I can't tell you how many tools I bought in the beginning thinking I needed all the tools and not really knowing what tools I needed. And I ended up spending so much money. Sometimes I, you know, I I won't even get into how much it was I was spending on tools, but it was a lot of money. And it turns out the a lot of the tools I started off with are tools I didn't even need. And in, to figure out what you need, you have to know how you operate. So as you're learning to operate your business like a business, you need to know how you operate and you need to have documented processes and documented procedures so that you know, you know how you're functioning as an entity. So the other thing I want to kind of go back to when we talk about you know people we follow, I think a big slap in my face when I look at my own mistakes was I found it disheartening um, because here I was this single mom who was just trying to start this business, you know, to have a better life and a better future for her child. And earlier you heard me say, you don't know what's really behind someone's success. We see people, we see them doing well and you're like, I want that same success. So I'm going to move forward and sign on with this person. And so I did that uh, more than once with different people. And I bought their courses, I bought their programs, and I found it very disappointing when they sold me the image of their life, which was they they were a single mom just like me. You know, at times they eat before they launched their business or the particular business model that they're teaching about, that they didn't know how they were going to feed their kid. And, and there was nothing more disheartening, disheartening than finding out that that wasn't the truth. To be a single mom, that means you don't have a a partner supporting you. And a lot of these women had husbands. So how are you a single mom if you have a second income supporting you? And so I think that was like earth shattering for me because I bought, I felt like they didn't give me, they did not give me a true authentic vision for who they were. And so that was deflating for me because here I I bought into their program and how can I believe that this program is going to help me when you couldn't even be honest about who you are and then another thing I want to just say about following the right people is you know a lot of gurus will tell you do as I say and not as I do and here's what I mean by that one of the things I always am leery of is anyone who sells a program and tells me there's only one way to get clients. There's only one way to do something. And rarely is that true in life and rarely is that true in business. And don't tell me there's one way and then and show me that one way and hide the other ways from me. And I've always been like this. I need to know all of my options. And that's why I'm, I'm that way as well. When I work with my clients, I, t- I share with them all of the options, let's say for marketing, and I'll talk about marketing in another episode, but I share everything, everything. I share all the different strategies, um, which ones are short-term, which ones are long-term so that people can decide what's best you know, for them. Marketing, it shouldn't be stressful. It shouldn't be painful. It should be a part of a natural part of everything you do. And so when someone tells me there's only one way right? To do something. And this is the only way you should be, do, you know, getting new customers. And they're selling a program about that, that right away, a red flag goes up for me. Because once I start looking at them a little bit deeper, I always see that they're not, they're teaching one thing and doing something else. So don't tell me there's only one way, like, oh, only paid ads can get you clients. But then I see you in the Facebook groups. I see you have a podcast, you know, And my thing is, I don't suggest you do 20 different strategies. I suggest you develop a marketing plan and a marketing strategy that works for you. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, be careful about following people uh, because they tell you to do something and, and they may not be sharing everything with you. So with that being said, I covered a lot. So let me just do a recap of everything I just mentioned. So, of course, this episode was about the stupidest things that new entrepreneurs do, which is basically boils down what mistakes new entrepreneurs make. So we talked about 
you know, following people for the right reasons, understanding that their success may not be your success. You have to really know what's behind their success and you have to look beyond the popularity and look beyond, look exactly at what they're teaching, decide what it is you need to know first, and then you get that information from them. Then we talked about branding. So being, you know, you need to be known for something. So figuring out what that's going to be. If you're known for 20 things or people you're hopping on and people don't know today, is she showing me what she ate for lunch or is she showing me like what she's selling? I don't know what she's showing me today. I don't even know what she stands for. It's, you know, it's going to be hard for you to connect with people because who are you connecting with? And, and no one knows what to expect from you. So when you take the time to brand yourself, you're known for something, people know what to expect when they see you and they um, can buy, you know, buy into your brand because after all, people aren't buying products and services. They're buying experiences, solutions, and transformations. And they are only buying those things from people who can showcase themselves. They, they feel like they know you. They feel like they know what you stand for. And most importantly, they feel like you can help them with whatever it is that they're struggling with. Then we talked about, you know, asking yourself what it is that you want to be known for. What is it that you enjoy doing? What is it that you want to do? Not following the trends because everyone will have a different picture of what it is you should be doing in your business. (laughs) And so you don't want to do follow other people's vision. You want to establish your own vision and you want to go after it and and figure out what it what your gaps are, what you need to know, but follow your own vision based on skills and expertise you already have. After all, you know, someone else has been monetizing your skills and expertise for a very long time, and so it's time that you do the same. Then we talked about not doing too much, okay? So, you know, eliminate all the extra stuff you're doing. You're you know, you you're you know, you have to look at how much time you're spending on the three to four different things that you're doing and narrow it down to one thing. What is out of all the three, four things I'm doing, what do I enjoy doing the most? What closely reflects what I want to be known for? And part it down to one and just do the one. And because after all, multiple streams of income aren't intended to have you doing 20 things at once. You know, a smart entrepreneur, a smart person in business is going to be strategic. They're going to plan things out. They're not going to do 20 different things all at once without ever mastering one, okay? So keep that in mind and read and study and see what it is that the most successful people are doing. Do it outside of the online people that you see. Find real books, read them, and you know, help and grow, you know, yourself personally and and in business, you know, grow your business knowledge. So the last thing I mentioned is operate like a business. So when you operate like a business, that means you understand how you operate. You have documented procedures. And the reason you have those documented procedures is that any you, anyone can step in your business and replicate your results. And to be able to do that, they have to know what your results are. So you have to know what's happening. You have to know your revenue, what revenue comes in, what brings in revenue, and you have to know uh, what's going out because you can bring in six figures and then, you know, when it's all said and done, your expenses, you know, kind of swallow that up. So you want to make, you're, you're in the business to be profitable. And so if you're running a for-profit business, make sure you're doing so by knowing how to operate your your company, your organization, like a business. Okay. So that concludes this episode. I want to thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me. I hope this information helps you. And I look forward to hanging out with you in a future episode. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. So, you know, every time I drop a new episode and don't forget to leave a review. Um, The Boss Experience Podcast is available anywhere you get your podcasts. And so feel free to leave me a review. See you in the next episode. Business success requires planning, strategy, and a whole lot of confidence. You have to believe success is possible for you. That's why I'm gifting you 30 free affirmations to hang around your house, to display in the office, or even use as journal prompts. You see, infusing your mind with positivity allows you to erase self-doubt, 
increase your confidence, and ditch the fears that come along with starting a business. So it's time to allow your mind to reflect the business and the future you desire. All you have to do is visit BossLadyAffirmations.com to grab your free affirmations today. Now back to the episode. Thank you for tuning in to the Boss Experience Podcast. Don't forget to leave a review for this episode and tune in next time.